Hey, welcome back. Let's continue working on our liquid pour project. In the last video, we worked on our pour detector, and in this video, we're gonna start blocking out the functionality for our stream. We won't be tackling the animations or anything like that just yet. We'll be doing that in the next video, but let's open up our stream script and start to fill that out. So here we are within the stream script, where the first thing that we're gonna be doing is creating a couple variables, one for our line renderer, as well as another one for the target position for the end of our line renderer. And for right now, we're primarily just going to be setting the positions of the start and the end of the line renderer. We will build out the coroutines that will sort of house our animations. The animations are a little bit more complex, so I would like to just put that in a separate video since we're going to be primarily blocking out the sort of flow of how this is going to work. That was not a stream related joke, I promise. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we need to do is set up our line renderer. So we'll do private void awake. We'll get our line renderer. And if you remember in the pore detector script, the first thing that we're going to be doing when we reach that pore threshold is instantiating a new instance of our stream prefab. And when the stream is instantiated, we need to make sure that we set both the start and the end position at the origin of our bottle. And our origin is going to be that empty transform where the mouth of the bottle is. And we're going to be doing that in start. So do a private void start. But we haven't necessarily wrote that move to function yet, so we'll hold off on doing that. We'll next be creating a new function called begin. And this is the function that's going to be called from that pore detector script. And then that begin function is going to start this coroutine. And this coroutine is going to manage where our stream is ultimately going to be hitting, as well as animating that endpoint to the ground. And for now, we'll just return yield, return. No. And we'll be writing two more signatures and then we'll begin to start to fill the rest of this out. We'll next have a function that returns a vector three that we're going to be doing find endpoint. And this is going to be called from our begin pour. So when the user tilts the bottle and our pour detector says, hey, you've reached the threshold, it's going to call that begin and then start the begin pour coroutine. And then within that coroutine, we're going to be constantly trying to find the endpoint of what our line render needs to be. And for right now, we'll just return vector 3.0. And then we'll have the function called void move to position. I decided to have a whole function for this because we will have one that just sets the position of the line renderer, while in the next video, we'll have one that actually animates it. We do need these two functions because when we're pouring, we don't want to necessarily animate the origin of the line renderer. We always want it to stick to the mouth of the bottle. So we don't want to animate that. We just want to automatically set its position. But this function does accept two arguments. One is going to be an integer called index, and then our vector three that we'll just call target position. And then that's that. So let's go up to start, where when the stream is instantiated, we need to make sure the line render is in the correct place. So we'll write move to position. We'll use our index here of zero. And I'll explain more of the index once we fill out the move to position. But we'll need to pass in an index of zero and a target position, which is going to be the position of the stream currently. And if you remember, within the pore detector, when we create the stream, we're setting its position to that of the origin. So we instantiate the stream, we take both of the ends of the line render, and we also place it at that same point. And there we go. Now we're using indexes because that's how the line renderer works. If we get that line renderer component and we say set position, it requires you to give it an index. And we do have a very simple line render where we have a start and an end point. However, you can have a line render that consists of several points. And that's why this index is pretty important, but it's also pretty easy to screw up. So that's why we're keeping it pretty simple. And we just have a start and an end point where we have an index of either zero or one. So we have our index, 
and then we're just putting in our target position. And there we go, that's all it is for this function. And like I said before, this may look like a little bit of an overkill, but once you sort of see, once we get to the function for actually animating it. All right, let's go into our begin. Now we won't be writing out all the functionality right here in begin right this second. We will in the next video once we fill out the ending pour functionality. But what we will be doing is starting the coroutine called begin pour. And then within that begin pour coroutine, we're going to have a while loop. And I'm using coroutines instead of updates, so it's very easy for us to start a particular piece of functionality that we want to continue over time and then end it and start another. So we have a coroutine for finding the ground when we begin the pour, and then another for animating that ending point down to the ground once the pour has ended. And if you have that in update, that may be a bit tricky to do. But when I'm using a while loop in a coroutine, I usually use the statement gameObject.active self. So while this game object is active and we started this coroutine, it's pretty much going to run for the lifetime of the object. And we'll move this yield return null into the while loop. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is setting our target position by calling that find endpoint. So we begin the pour and we say, hey, shoot a raycast towards the ground to see where we need to set the line renderer. And then once we do that, we want to move that ending position to that target position. So while we're pouring, we want to manage both our start and our endpoint. But for right now, we're just going to use move to position for both. In the next video, once we implement the animation, we'll animate that endpoint down to the ground so it doesn't automatically snap to it. So let's just write move to position, zero transform.position. So we want the starting point of our line renderer to stay at that origin. And then we want to call move to position again, put that index of one, but instead of transform position, we just want to put target position. So we're going to be moving the end to that raycast point. And this is going to happen once we've begun our pour and while the game object is active or until we end the coroutine. In the next video, we'll be ending the coroutine so we can start another coroutine that contains a different piece of functionality. But that's actually it for right now. Let's scroll down here and then let's just find our endpoint where this is pretty simple. We're just going to be doing a normal physics raycast and we'll first create our necessary variables. So we'll have a raycast hit. We'll create a ray where we want to ray from the current position of our stream. And we want to raycast downward. And then we want to actually recast. So we'll have our physics recast. We'll pass in our ray. We'll use the keyword out. We'll pass in that raycast hit so we can get some data out of this raycast. And for right now, I just set it to two for the distance. Next, we need to figure out what endpoint we need to use. So we're either going to be using that hit position of our raycast hit or the end of our raycast if we're not hitting anything. If you want to, you can make this a lot longer or potentially make it infinite. But for peace of mind, I just set it to two, just so I know it has a particular terminating point. We'll have a vector three that we'll call endpoint, where if we've hit something, if we have a, if we have a collider from our raycast hit, we want to use that hit point, or we'll use that ray and we'll say get point, where we want to pass in a distance and we'll use two, and that will effectively give us the end of our raycast. So we're either going to use the position that we're actually hitting or the end of the raycast. And let's just make sure that we're returning the correct value. So we'll be returning endpoint and not vector 3.0. All right, and that about does it for our functionality for right now. We need to go into our pore detector so we can actually call that begin function. So we'll click over to our pore detector. We'll go to our start pore. And the first thing that we'll want to do is create a new stream. And then we have our current stream, and then we'll just call begin. All right, and I think that about does it. Let's go back into Unity and test it out. All right, so now that we're back in Unity, let's check our bottle really quick. See if we got all of our references. We need to set up our origin as well as our stream prefab. So let's go to our prefabs folder, bring in our stream prefab, go to our origin, we'll drag that in, and I think that about does it. 
Let's hit play and hopefully this works. All right, and there we go. You can see that our line render is going from the origin down to the ground. And as of right now, we're not setting our current particle location, so it's just staying at the mouth of the bottle, which actually kind of looks kind of cool. I didn't imagine that would happen. And since we haven't written the in pour functionality, this line continues even when the bottle is above the threshold. And if we can see in our hierarchy here, it's just continuing to create more streams as it goes along. And we'll be taking care of that in the next video. But that about does it for now. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have any problems, questions, or anything like that, feel free to leave them below, and I'll see you in the next one.